cat's axillary region here, and we're going to look at the vessels serving the forelimb. Here we see the very short subclavian vein lying next to the subclavian artery, which is just coming around the rib cage. The subclavian artery becomes the axillary artery, seen here. Next to the axillary artery lies the axillary vein. The axillary vein joins the subscapular vein to form that subclavian vein. We move distally along the axillary artery and vein, we come to the long thoracics. The long thoracic vein is broken, but the artery is seen here. The long thoracics serve the pectoral muscles as well as the latissimus dorsi. From the point of the long thoracics distally, we call these vessels the brachial vein and the brachial artery. Now that we've finished looking at the vessels in the axillary region, we'll turn the cat over and look at the lateral aspect of the forelimb. Cutting across the deltoid muscles of the cat is the cephalic vein. The hind limb vessels come from the iliacs in the pelvic cavity. And here you see the external iliac vein. This marks the end of the pelvic cavity and the beginning of the femoral region. In the femoral region, you have the femoral artery lying next to the femoral vein. These vessels are seen here. As the femoral artery and vein travel along the thigh, they run deep and go behind the knee. Another major vessel in this region is the great saphenous vein, which drains into the femoral vein. The great saphenous vein is very long and comes up and connects with the femoral vein. All of this is femoral and this is the great saphenous vein. 